So one term you hear thrown around a lot is decibels. Like when they're talking about suppressors, you know, this decibel level, that decibel level. But decibels is a really hard thing to kind of understand. Mm. So if you would break down, because you taught me a lot about this as well, because you have one of those super fancy $5,000, you know, decibel meters. So at Wyoming Arms, you guys are tracking it, but there's a certain way you measure it. So talk about decibels and, and just, just a unit of measurement, I guess. Yeah, and decibels is kind of confusing because it's a measure of pressure. So when you're talking about sound, you can have no pressure or you could be inside a nuclear bomb, which is a <laughs> lot of pressure. So the ability to be able to quantify a number to that requires a logarithmic scale, which is a, every one decibel is a times 10. So 10 decibels is times 100, 20 decibels is times 1,000. So it's a way to be able to measure a huge scale with a little bit smaller number so you can talk about the same things. But that can get confusing in rifles and, and what we're doing because three decibels from 170 down to 167 is quite a bit, it's still loud, but three decibels from 120 down to 117 gets really hard for a human to tell the difference. So it's, it's just a logarithmic scale that's used in measuring suppressors. Um, you know, we, we call it chasing decibels for some companies that that's the only thing they care about, but it's, it's, it's a unit of measurement, but it's not a one-to-one -one unit of measurement. It's a, it's a logarithmic 10-to-1 unit. Again, and I've mentioned this a few times, I know you have, everybody, everybody in the firearms industry suggests that you wear hearing protection all the time. Now, having said that, there is a certain amount of decibels that we could take, our human ear could take without damage. And OSHA actually has a standard for that. Mm -hmm. So would you, would you break that down a little bit so people, when you're looking at decibel levels, it'll at least give you a little bit of an idea of what's an acceptable sound. So you've told me before that when I clap my hand, somebody just making one clap, that runs around how many decibels, 120 if, something? If you hit it pretty hard and just right 130. So you can so get a, We kind of play games, you try and hit 130 on the meter just goofing around. So, uh -huh. so you can clap your hands and get up to 130, let's say, decibels. So now, what does OSHA consider acceptable? 140 for one exposure for your employee for that day. Gotcha. Doesn't say that 141 causes damage. It merely says you can expose an employee to 140. And as we look at the decibel, that's double the loudness or 10 times the loudness of that hand clap from 130 to 140. There's our 10 decibel range. And so that's 10 times the noise or 100 times the noise. I'm sorry I screwed that up in the decibel deal. So, you know, it gives you just a reference to what that is. But, you know, in the field, sometimes I shoot without hearing protection, although we never recommend that. But I'm not an employee and nobody's forcing me to do that. Right. So I kind of know, and we've measured them all. And, and if it's, you know, 140, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a hunting situation, you're like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna shoot one time. And since mm -hmm. OSHA, and like you said, accepts one time exposure in the course of a day of up to 140 decibels, that's kind of a rough standard. Meters up. Off safe, going hot. Ready? 139.5. Point five, uh -huh. which is totally hearing safe one, for one, one exposure. exposure. Now, OSHA, I think, uh, errors on the side of caution. They have to. Yeah, I, and I mm -hmm. certainly understand that. But I guess my point there is, if they're saying exposure one time to 140 is safe mm -hmm. and isn't going to cause hearing damage, it's probably a little more than that. Now, mm -hmm. that's just my personal opinion, right. of uh -huh. course. But I think that's a very good standard to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, that's not going to cause you know, hearing damage. And if I'm out in a hunting situation, which oftentimes I am, mm -hmm. and I not wearing it for that one shot mm -hmm. at the elk or one shot at the coyote, it gives me a range or something to think about as far as I'm in that cell, that safe realm. And it's, it's that also the number of exposure too, like what we're talking about. So let's say you were on a high volume prairie dog shoot and you had your gun tuned down where you, you know, like we got a lot of ours at the ear, we're running 137 decibels. Well, if you're gonna shoot hundred prairie dogs, I'm thinking you should probably put some plugs in, even though you're only exposing yourself down to that level, but you're doing it a hundred times in that one day. No, that's a good point. Uh -huh, yeah. Good point. So depending on what you're doing, but right. again, we always advise hearing protection, but that is a good thing to look at and go, mm -hmm. okay, at least you understand kind of where that range is.